First up, practical and creative ways to get your financial life back on track. This is for everyone, whether you just graduated from college, you're just starting to build up your credit history, or you're looking for ways to retire. Clark Howard is a consumer expert, radio and television host, and smart money man today. He's here to tell us about his new book. Here's what it's called, Clark Howard's Living Large for the Long Haul. Consumer tested ways to overhaul your finances, increase your savings, and get your life back on track. All that Love sounds that. good. Yeah, but the Cinnamon roll sounds so much more fun. <laughs> we'll a lot out. more fun, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll share because they're they're plenty big. Uh, it's a great book. What I like about this is that you you've really gone to people who've who've kind of been in the trenches. Oh yeah. Not just your expert advice from talking to people, but you're really sharing their stories. Yeah, this is my tenth book, and it's completely different than the prior nine. The the other nine were all very tips oriented. Do this, do this, do this. This one came out of all the public appearances I do. Ever since the Great Recession six years ago, I've been hearing so much pessimism in people, so much doubt about the future. People have lost jobs, uh, people who got foreclosed on, who've been drowning in debt, whatever. And what it taught me is people needed like a booster shot. People needed a reset. So I have profiles on 50 individuals and families from across America who may have gotten crushed by the Great Recession, but have made their way back. How they did it, what you can learn from them, and tips following each profile that you can use in your own life. Because people needed more than just the tips this time. They mm -hmm. needed that confidence. And we're not done as a country. You know, a lot of people are pessimistic about where America's going, what it's going to be like for their children. Don't believe it. Things mm. are going to be okay here. Yeah. Well, I like oh, that message. Here. It's true. And these real antidotes, uh, antidotes, they're not, you know, made up stories. They're not just a list of tips. Like you said, these are real people who've done it themselves. What are some examples? Let's, let's kind of give a, a, maybe like a little piece of sure. someone's I'll, story. I'll give you something that is one of those things. We use the word crisis so mm -hmm. much in America, but Student loans have become a real burden for the country. We have over a trillion dollars collectively in student loan debt. And so I profile a couple that has just under $100,000 in student loans. They live in downstate Illinois. And they realized they were going to be in debt the rest of their lives, mm -hmm. that they would never be able to pay off that debt. And they decided to take unbelievably radical surgery to their budget. They sold both of their cars. And 12 months a year, they get around by bicycle. Wow. They do everything by bike. In and, Illinois. In Illinois. In, in the winter. winter. In, in winter. winter. <laughs> Wait, and let me tell you something. This couple has paid off all their student loan debt now. And now they are fit. They're lean, mean fighting machines from having ridden bikes. And now they can actually afford to have a car again. They're into it as a lifestyle. I, I figure they'll get a little older. They'll change their mind. <laughs> yeah, right. They'll go back to cars. <laughs> But it's an example of somebody mm -hmm. who felt like there was no way out in their lives. And they did something extreme, but found a path out. And I've got, I've got stories that far mm -hmm. over the line. And then others where people made basic changes in their lives and brought things back into a good balance. Well, let's break it down a little bit, yeah. too. Let's talk about retirement next, because you share yeah. a lot of great uh, stories about retirement. Some about a woman who wants to retire early and manages to do it 10 years uh, ahead of retirement age, which was awesome. But you've also got the story of this guy, Mike, who's yeah. kind of playing catch up on retirement at yes. the age of 50. Right. And that is a common thing. You know, I find a lot of people don't know the word retirement. It's not in their vocabulary till past their 40th birthday. So the rest of the way, you're going to be playing catch up. And what it means is if you retire, if you want to retire at a normal age and you don't realize till you're 40, 45, 50, in, in his case 50, you're going to have to be a maximum saver the rest of the way. You're going to have to pile money into your retirement accounts. In and you say at least 10 cents on every dollar, From right? when you start working at 21. Okay. Mm -hmm. So at but 50 then, what is it? But if you 50... Uh, I don't want people to get too upset. <laughs> you started at age 50 and you want to retire at 65, it's a scary percent of your pay. Believe yeah. it or not, it's about a third of your pay. So like 33%. So, yeah. So what it really means is age 50 is when you say, I think I need to start saving. What it usually means is you're going to have to delay retirement to like 68, 69, 70 years old. So you have more years to build money up 
and then you have fewer years that that money has to cover. Hmm. Have you ever seen a situation that somebody's talking to you about? You're like, there's, there's just no way. I don't know how they're going to do it. And they, they have surprised you. Yes. There was a couple from Nashville, Tennessee, that money had become such a burden in their lives, they were headed to divorce court. It was ripping their marriage apart. You'd be amazed how much money troubles in a couple can tear them up. And they were what I call past too late. There was like nothing I could think of. And I'm, uh, this was, I was doing on television. I got the cameras there. And it's like, so what are we going to do here? And so I get them talking. And they start arguing, which, of course, the TV mm -hmm. people love. And they're arguing <laughs> away. And, and I said, you know what? The two of you need to agree right now on an allowance. Like you're back in grade school. Mm -hmm. How much are you going to give each other permission to spend each month? And this couple, I was like, this isn't going to work. It worked. And mm. they managed to take this situation where they had debt that exceeded their total annual income. And they, in little less than five years, got all their debt paid off, their marriage healed, they're in great shape. Well, it reminds me of the story that you have of another couple where they basically eliminated $40,000 worth of debt in just 24 months. And that was going to be something else I think that's important to talk about today is credit card debt yes. specifically. Yeah. What, are your, what have you learned from talking to people who've made some really big mistakes and what is your best tip? The credit cards are a thing that give us permission to spend. We don't have a sense how deep the well is of money we have. And if an individual or a couple finds they can never get ahead. The credit card debts just sit there. You have to live by cash. Mm -hmm. You know, the beautiful thing, if I pull out a wallet, and I'll do it right now for mm -hmm. you, okay. and I pull out a piece of plastic, you know, what, how much plastic, how much money does this represent? I have no idea how much money this represents. But if I pull out a $10 bill yeah. and I have that, we know I use it. I have six left. That's all I have. So cash is the most valuable tool for people who have had trouble disciplining that you put the plastic in the freezer, literally. Mm -hmm. You take a freezer bag, put water in it, put the cards in, <laughs> seal it, throw it in your freezer, <laughs> and when you're tempted to spend, by the time it thaws out, hopefully you're past that urge. I like that. And That's you good. live on cash. Yeah. It, is, it seems so like a throwback. You know, who carries cash anymore? But if you carry cash, it'll change your life. Mm. Yeah. I love that. I think it's great. You know, we've got a lot of Facebook people who have asked you questions, so we're going to get to those because you've agreed to stick around. Plus, there's a tip that you gave last time you were here that I have used since then. I think it's one of the greatest money-saving tips just at home. Yeah, I can't remember what it is. Yeah. I'm dying to hear which uh, one it is. It's a small one, but it saved me a lot of money. So it's something that I've used. Um, I'll tell you what it is when we come back, too. So it's great. You're going to stick around, answer yes, some more I questions. Will. Yeah, look forward to it. And we All want right. to talk about your discussion coming up tonight because consumer advocate Clark Howard will be discussing his new book, Clark Howard's Living Large for the Long Haul, at 6.30 tonight. That's at Sunset Playhouse, 800 Elm Grove Road. The event is free. It's also open to the public. We took your Facebook questions. We're going to ask them in just a minute. But first, Tiffany took some advice from you the last time you were here and has remembered it ever since and practices it. So no, what I is was it? waiting to hear I know what we're I know. Suspense. I haven't told him yet. The best tip that you gave that I started using, and it's a small one, but it made a big difference is simply to dry off your razors and then you never have to buy new razors. I've been using the same razor for like three months and it is just like brand new. It's amazing because a razor doesn't degrade from the shaving. At it all. degrades from the moisture. So I've been using the same razor since March. How does it look? Uh, I think okay. it looks really good. Okay. You I like never shave. have to replace my razors now. And they can be expensive. Well, I bought a Warehouse Club pack yeah. years ago of like 55 razors. They were 17 cents each. It's a lifetime supply. I'm I never going to be able to work through them. I, I love know. it. It's, it's the, one of the best tips. It's small, but it saves a lot of money. All right, let's get to as many of these as we can and sure. dry off your razor. Remember that one. All right, Missy wants to know, can you please tell us where we can get a money tree for our backyard? We could use it right now. <laughs> wow. Well, you got to be your own money tree. I mean, that's really the truth is that, and I'll get serious for saying, if you have a retirement plan at work and you're not contributing enough to it, every six months take it up 1% 
and then eventually you're saving real money. You have planted your own money tree. I like there that. you go. Uh, Erica wants to know, how about going back for a master's degree? What's the best option? It's really in right now to go back to graduate school because the job market's been so tough. If that's what you want to do, I know you should always pursue what you love, but look at the list of jobs that are paying the most, that have the greatest number of openings in the years ahead. Pick a master's in one of those that you love, then it's going to pay back big time. I, like I have that list on my website, by the way, at okay. clarkhoward.com. Okay, where do you so look for it specifically? You just put in um, job growth or top jobs in okay. the search box. Okay. Kathleen wants to know, if any money that we can save, where should we put it? Well, that goes back to the thing I said before. If you have a retirement plan at work, always start there because it's automatic. It happens before you get your check. And most companies do a match of some sort. We hope. Yeah. Yeah, about two-thirds do. <laughs> okay. But if you work at a place that doesn't have a retirement plan, there's something called a Roth IRA that's yep. fantastic. Okay. They are great because you put money in, every dollar you put in up to $5,500 a year grows tax-free all through the years and... You spend it tax free mm -hmm. in retirement. Love yeah. that. Susan wants to know she said she received a letter from a major medical group in Chicago that four con uh, computers containing pertinent patient information was no. stolen in July. Should they take their offer of free credit monitoring for one year through Experian? It's not enough. Uh, you know, credit monitoring just tells you it's like a burglar alarm. Oops, the burglar's in your house. Okay. The better thing to do is something known as credit freeze which if somebody's tapped into your identity, you shut them down. They can't apply for any credit as if they're you. And credit freeze is a very simple process that you do with each credit bureau. Having been a victim of identity theft, most states, I don't know if Wisconsin does, allow you to credit freeze fee free. Okay. Great, okay. love that. And where do you find out more about credit if freeze? You, if you just Google credit freeze, okay. or I have a credit freeze guide on my website. Okay, right? Sherry wants to know, and this is a great question, I think, the company she works for was recently sold. This would also apply if you're working at a company and you go to a new company. She has the option of rolling over her 401k into that new company or going to an investment firm and doing it as an individual. What's your preference? If she's got real knowledge about investing, Maybe you roll it over into your own IRA. But if investing is not your first best destiny, then <laughs> roll it into the new employer, the new 401k plan, leave it there, and just let the money continue to grow there. And one thing really quick that I learned is that um, if you have a financial advisor or even just a friend who, who's into financial ad advising, if you show them your options in terms of your 401k, because some plans offer just one option, some it's sure. a lot, but they're really good at looking that and just very quickly mm -hmm. giving you where they think your money should be. And usually I found that they're, they're pretty spot on. And if you don't have that person, the best thing to do with your 401k money, most of us have a choice of what's known as a target retirement fund based on the year you're likeliest to retire, yes. just throw all your 401k money into that choice. It's like set it and forget it. Great tip. Okay, Daryl wants to know, what is the best credit card? Well, that depends what it's for. There is a website called creditcardtuneup.com that is so neat. You take your actual charge pattern, put in how much you spend each month and in what categories, and it'll tell you the absolute best credit cards for you based on your individual charge pattern. Mm, that's that. wild. Creditcardtuneup.com. Yeah. I think yeah, a lot of people. Nobody's ever heard of it, but no. it's a great website. Is it yeah. free? Yeah, completely free to use. Wow. I think a lot of people are going to rewatch this segment because yeah. we're giving a lot of great and information. Send it I've been to your writing it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really good. Um, what's your single best tip for um, uh, cars? Um, buy or lease, buy new or old? Buy and keep it for a long, long, mm -hmm. long time. Do you know if somebody keeps a car, buys a new car, keeps it 10 years, versus the typical cycle people own a car, just that one change in your life, mathematically, you'll be able to retire five years sooner than somebody who gets tired of a car before the car is tired. I believe that. Yeah, we're both like, yeah, we're both driving old owners. cars. Yeah, 10 yeah. year old Good owners. For you. <laughs> my, um, my last quick question, this is yes. a personal one. Coupons, good idea or do, are they just kind of a waste of time? Coupons, if you're methodical about it, can be very good. There's a website called couponmom.com mm -hmm. 
that teaches you the strategies about how to maximize the value of coupons. Okay. Couponmom.com. Love it. Good advice, Clark. I always love you're it. You're great. When you're here. It's never enough Thanks. time. Yeah, it was a Thanks fantastic. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh huh. You can see Clark tonight. He's having a book discussion at 6:30 at Sunset Playhouse on Elm Grove Road. That's where you can also get his new book again as well. It's Live in Large for the Long Haul with Clark Howard. Because doesn't Mania. everybody want to live large? <laughs> yeah. That's why we have big cinnamon rolls today. So true. And live large. Yeah. Thank you so much, sure, Clark. Thank you. Awesome to have you here. It's always great.